Okay, been a while since we uh, recorded a Blitz game. So we're gonna... We're gonna have one Blitz game here, maybe some... Some post-game analysis, we'll see. Uh, Bay Hacker. He's just a pretty strong Blitz player I've played him before. Let's see what opening we, uh, we get here. Looking like a close Sicilian reversed. With d5 he could have entered the Grunfeld, but now we have a close Sicilian reversed. Which is characterized by, well, usually white going d3 instead of d4. And with d3 I aim to keep the position a little bit more solid. Um, I'm gonna play b4. I can actually take on c3, which is interesting, but we'll leave it at that and see what happens. Yeah, these positions are often characterized by um, yeah, because white is so solid, he wants to play on the queen side. Um, usually, I'll play d3 here. Uh, I'm gonna play this move. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, take. He takes with a bishop. Oh, now I might consider d4. I might consider d4 now. I'll do that. d4 and e3. Well, probably. But he does have f5 though, which is uh, maybe not the best. Uh, e3. I'm, th I'm thinking even if e5, maybe even f4. Just trying to stop his play completely here on the king side. Don't want him uh, bothering me. And this also maybe leaves his knight maybe. A little bit offside, that's what I'm hoping. Okay, now we can think about uh, the queen side. He goes back with the knight. Um, do I want to spend the move? No, not really. Just play rook here. I think I take with the queen. He goes bishop e6. Okay, I could go d5. It's a bit risky. Uh, my pawn is hanging, so I have to do something about that. But I don't really want to go d5, do I? d5, bishop back, rook takes, queen takes. Well, let's try it. I'll start with this. Then we go d5. And okay, there's a little bit of a weakness here. So can I play 92? He plays knight here, I'll take this. 92, 94, take. That should be okay. I want to put the knight on the d4 square, which is actually quite a nice square. Queen there, ooh, it's a tricky move. Tricky move. Oh, this is hanging. Okay, queen c1, protecting everything, for now at least. Yeah, I played this guy before and he plays very much for time, so that can be tricky. Let's play rook a4. It's a bit tricky. Let's play. Oh, I can't do that. I want to play rook a4, but I have knight c3, so let's do this. He's playing really fast. Uh, kind of too fast, really, because, uh, yeah, he missed this move. But he gets a lot of compensation, it seems. Let's see if I take this one. Now he has to watch out. Maybe queen d8 is, is annoying for him with jack. I play knight e8 back, then I have to put the queen. Ugh. Did not see that move, but is this a good move? Check here. Mm. Look, a1 to, to a8. Queen b3. The king is safe on h1, so... This looks quite solid for me. If this knight ever moves, I have queen f6, which also looks mid-ish. So this, yeah, this looks like a winning advantage, and he just gives it up. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, what happened in this game. <coughs> I played c4, which is the English opening, and uh, f6. So I feel I'm a bishop. So I'm forced to play either. Either with d4 or d3, so it kind of depends on which move I choose there, how uh, how the middle game develops. 
But after uh, yeah, all these moves are quite normal. D6 is the King Cynthia and D5, Black can enter into a into a Grunfeld. Uh, the Fiend Shadow line of the Grunfeld. Uh, it's called Fiend Shadow because white Fiend Shadows, but of course, the Bishop is always Fiend Shadowed for uh, for Black in the Grunfeld and the King Cynthia. But he went with D6, so now we have a King Cynthia set up for Black. A castle, Knight C6. And. Yeah, I don't know why, but I've been po starting to postpone D3 a little bit. I'm not sure how effective it is, if it's good or if it's not, but uh, it shouldn't matter. I, I can always just play D3 next move, but you know, 99% of the time I've gone D3 here, but some some recent games I've, I've been trying with B1. I don't think it, it really matters. A5, A3, Knight H5. This is an interesting line. I don't remember if I played... This guy on video in this line, but uh, yeah, the idea is not to play e5 just yet and play f5, f4, put the bishop on g4, and black can develop some uh, some uh, active play on the king side. And it's a good blitz line, and I I played it once for black in a tournament game as well. Uh, a game which I lost, but it was a really interesting game, and uh, I had my, my chances. For sure in that game, but my opponent played played quite a good game and won. I think his name was uh, I think it was a Norwegian. I am Bjartelius Salvesen, if I can remember it correctly. Uh, so he went knight h5. I went b4. And here I mentioned. I mean, sometimes it, it's interesting to take here, and it might be an idea. I mean, you certainly don't want to give up this bishop too easily, but. If I can't get to the diagonal, then maybe uh, can be a positional positional idea. I'm not, I'm not so sure right here. I mean, it's an idea, but probably it's uh, uh, probably the plus aren't that great for for black. But okay, that's a different story. He went f5, uh, b5, knight e5, and I took. I thought I would gain a tempo on the bishop. I mean, you might take with a pawn, that's not, I don't think that's ridiculous. It's an active idea, and then just try and play f4 and, and attack. But he took with the bishop, and now I thought maybe take with, uh, maybe play d4 and hit the bishop. So bishop went back, e3, e5, and f4. So here I'm stopping him from going f4, by going f4 myself, and hoping he has to spend some time with his knight. But after e4, I'm not. It's hard to assess how this position is. I mean, he's got. I mean, he he has his pluses also. I mean, he has a far advanced pawn here, so he has more space on the king side. I have more space on the queen side. But maybe my pluses are that it's not so easy for him to attack. I mean, okay, maybe knight c4 at some point, but your only pawn break is d5, which takes. A long time to both uh, prepare and also a long time for it to become effective. So bishop e6. And here the question was what to do. Uh, I think I maybe miscalculated here. Uh, I kind of wanted to uh, take queen. Uh, he takes with the queen and maybe play queen d2 and get my rook to the a1 square with uh, with tempo, but that didn't really transpire in the game, so bishop f7 and I played knight to e2 yeah, I think my original intention was queen to 2 which I didn't play here that looks like a decent move, I'm covering this pawn so there's no uh, you know, no tempo gain by this move so that's not really an effective move, and maybe I'm just maybe I'm slightly better here, I mean this move is coming, but uh, Maybe hard to break through. So maybe put, put an eye on the, on the C5 square is a good idea for black. Put an eye here. I'll play this move. It's probably best to keep an eye on this square. Otherwise I put a rook here, so maybe a queen here. It's also nice just to go here. Yeah, just play knight C5. Maybe this isn't an issue, my rook coming in here. But uh, yeah, probably this is my main main issue this is not a very good piece but on the other hand this one isn't all that great 
you could imagine something like something like this. Yeah, I'm not sure how this position is. Maybe it's fine for black. So you have this knight here. And uh, yeah, I think this piece might be slightly better because you can play c6 maybe in some end games. You can maybe play g5. Activate the bishop here. It's, it's kind of hard to assess. I mean, you could play queen f6. You, you could also just play something like this and, you know, d3 square, something I have to worry about. And I don't really have any attack going over here. Yeah, maybe this is just better for black. But in the game, I played knight to e2 here instead of queen t2. Knight e2 here. You want queen a2, and now he's hitting this and this. And I can't give up the bishop for uh, for the knight. Then this bishop becomes too strong, covering this square. He can take over the a file and attack my weaknesses here and here. So queen c1 looks more or less forced. Yeah, note that queen t4, which looks like a threatening battery, is just uh, met easily with knight h5 or knight e8. And now we're covering the bishop and winning this one. So that's a blunder. So queen c1 looks forced. You want rook a8. And here, at first I thought rook a4 is a threat, but then I saw knight c3. So I just needed to find a waiting move to... Because he was playing quite fast, so I was hoping he would do just that, play rook a4, that's what he did, and it seems... Uh, it's just lost after this take here. Um, yeah, well, maybe his best bet was something like knight e8, queen back, and then take another pawn on b5. And then he can maybe fight, and he had the time match, so maybe he... Would have been able to put up resistance, but this is just a clear blunder. And now rook a1, and this rook is just coming to a8, teaming up with the queen when he can't protect this. And note that my king is safe here or here, so it doesn't have time to do anything to me. I might even save this bishop. I mean, I'll just play here and then rook here. Yeah, he doesn't really have time to do anything. So let's say takes, and we just go. Uh, yeah, also, there's also this move maybe, but this looks sufficient. And should be mating. Yeah, because it doesn't have time for anything. Uh, knight check, I just take either one. And I mean, he has to cover the mate, so. White just wins. So, yeah, so that's why he resigned after the rookie one. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.